Okay, here we are in our VR environment again, and this time what we're looking at is Little Harbor on the north shore of Nova Scotia, and this is a degraded orthophoto collected with our Chiroptera 2 topobathymetric LIDAR. This photo was captured at 5 centimeters, but we're currently viewing it here at 1 meter. And as you can see, uh, there's no, uh, no bathymetry existing. Right now it's just water. What we can do is drain that water because we've captured all of the bathymetry with the topobathy LIDAR. So we're draining it here all the way down through and we can now see all of the all of the sand uh, through these areas we can see large patches of eelgrass and uh, eelgrass over in these areas as well we can fly through the data set and of course the photo doesn't show us nearly the detail that the bathymetric lidar does And we can even uh, sort of simulate uh, the tide coming back in. So here comes the water up through the channels. Uh, unlike our GIS flood risk modeling, this is not taking into account connectivity. But let's say we now have extreme high tide. And let's bring on a little bit of a storm surge and just see what's going to be inundated. Uh, obviously, it's creeping up this field here quite a bit encroaching on this home and if we move over here we can sort of I'm going to lower the water level again and we can look at the uh, issues and and some of the sensitive habitat and I've now flooded the landscape quite a bit that it it is slowly draining back out, and we'll see the extent of this salt marsh over here. Let's just go in and have a closer look. So uh, this would be one of the, the critical habitats. Uh, we could easily calculate what the tidal range would be, and that's probably about normal high tide with a little bit of inundation. Then we have low tide, and that tidal cycle comes back and forth flooding these uh, very critical salt marshes for uh, a variety of habitat. And this is all provincial park land, and we're just at the edge of uh, Malmerby Beach and some of the parking areas here. We've been studying this bay because we're interested in uh, aquaculture development possibly. So to understand where the channels are, the depth of the channels, the movement and so forth, and if we come over here, we can really look at how, uh, how dynamic the coast is and the fact that this sandbar here that I'm pointing at used to be only probably to a boat there, and this back bay would have a major drainage system out through to connect to the main uh, harbor. And if we go up, we can see the huge amount of sediment. This has actually been a... Uh, a and a grading, aggregating system where this dune is growing larger and larger and sediment has basically filled in this back environment here. And if I drain, you can see these large channels that used to exist and now we only have a very, uh, a very small uh, channel available out through. Let's bring that water back in just to give you some sense of uh, here we go water's coming into the larger bay and now we start to get it so you know these would have continued on these large channels and uh, this sediment here has really just uh, uh, clogged this whole area significantly so a huge amount of sediment. Uh, some grass is starting to be established on the dune. And if we look at high tide, we can go under and start to try to follow the channel. Kind of choked off here. We can get into the deeper channel. 
I believe it's somewhere about here. Let's have our uh, submersible. And we're now following our way through the channel. We have this large block in the center of the channel. And then uh, moving our way through. It really scours on that one corner. Uh, we have some really increased currents from our hydrodynamic model. And it's as I move up, it's some of these uh, shallow areas. Um, let me uh, drain that water a little more to show you where the shallow areas are. Uh, some of the aquaculture is being grown over here. Unfortunately, at Chapel Bay, uh, we have some significant pollution problems uh, where some of these corners of the bay are closed because of uh, chronic uh, water quality problems, um, pollution-wise. So, uh, the VR set with this combination of coastal bathymetry and coastal photography is uh, fantastic for interacting with the data and just understanding how this system works a little more. Okay, thank you.